Alright guys, welcome to your 41st tutorial, and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys about some different types of inputs, because, you know, sometimes you just want the user to enter a unique piece of information like their name or the address, but other times you're going to want to have the user select from a, like a preset list, like when they say pick what sex you are. You want to give them the choice of male or female. You don't want to have them enter something weird. So you're just going to give them set choices. So there are times for them to input text and times for them to select from a list. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. And you make a list in one of two different types of ways. Actually one of three, but we're going to be talking about two in this tutorial. For example, let's go ahead and take that male and female example I was just talking about. And male, female, and in the mail, what we're going to do first is we want to give them two choices, either male or female. We don't want to allow them to select male and female because, you know, not too many people are male and female. A few, but not too many. So the first thing we need to do is, first of all, we're going to do a different type of input other than text. We need to add something called a radio button. A radio button is pretty much a bunch of buttons but you can only select one of the buttons so let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do that right now input type instead of text put radio and I think this term comes from the old radios where you had to press buttons on them instead of you know digitalized or whatever it's called and anyways aside from that type you also need a name and the name of this is going to be sex or something and you need a name because if you have a bunch of different radio buttons and you have you know maybe a group of buttons for what sex you are and a group of buttons for your favorite food and a group of buttons for what band you like it knows how to group them together so group all your buttons under the same name and the last one is what value you want to give it and most of these um most of these attributes you don't really understand until you start understanding, you know, something like JavaScript or PHP or how to, you know, computer programming where you have to take this information and do something with it. But anyways, you need a value because later on, whenever you're programming this data and putting it into a database or something, you need to know what these things are. So if there's ever something that doesn't quite make sense, that's because you don't understand JavaScript yet. Or maybe you do, and you know, then it'll make sense. So anyways, this is one button, but let's go ahead and add another button right here. Just go ahead and paste that, and give it a different value. All your buttons need to have different values, even though they have the same name. Remember that. Same type, same name, different values. That's how they differentiate each other. So let's go ahead and save that and see what we got. We now have two radio buttons, one right here and one right here with the same name. And since they are the same name, our browser knows that they're in the same group. So to group them together, and you can only let the user select one. So when they select this, the other one comes unselected. When they select this, the other one comes unselected. So you're saying, that's pretty cool, now I understand radio buttons. But what if there comes across a scenario where I want to let the user select more than one thing for example if you're making like a website selling um, <laughs> selling meats online yes meat like bacon and stuff well you're gonna wanna allow the user to select more than one thing so for example let's go ahead and add a new line break and let's go ahead and add a paragraph and insert mess that up okay now let's go ahead and ask them a question like select the foods wow I can't type today that okay take a break deep breath learn to type select the foods that you would like to order an explanation point because we really want to rub it in their eyes alright so now we're gonna give them a huge list of foods but we don't want to allow them to only select one because how are we ever going to grow our business if we can only sell and sell one food at a time we want to give them a huge list and give them the option of either selecting none all of them or you know somewhere in between so in order to do that we need a different type of input and this is called a checkbox a checkbox is pretty much a lot like radio buttons but you can check as many as you can either one all of them two three four however many so it doesn't unselect them automatically like a radio button so let's go ahead and first add some food bacon ham tuna and soda pop even though soda pop isn't really a food hey for this website I'm selling it who the heck cares so let's go ahead and 
for the input type it is get out of the way cursor for the type it's checkbox and this is going to give you a little box that you can check hmm, how neat is that and for the name let's name all of these food so anyways all of these types will be named food so food, 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 food. Just like before, the name's the same. The only difference is the value is different. So for example, this one is going to have the value of bacon. And let me go ahead and end that before I forget. And let's just go ahead and copy this four times because I'm way too lazy to type all this out. So this one is going to be the exact same, except this one's going to have the value of ham. This one's going to have the value of tuna. And this one's going to have the value of soda. And now let's go ahead and save it and see what we get. Now it says, select the foods that you would like to order. Well, instead of just having a radio button where they can only select one, now they can select one, two, three, or four. So how cool is that? So now we have the different types of lists where you can either give them one choice or you can give them many choices. And also we have our old trusty reliable text box. So anyways, now we learn a little more about forms and we're ready to move on to the next type of input. And probably I'm going to be teaching you a different and the last type of list, which is a drop down list. But I don't know yet. Hey, what do I look like? A fortune teller? So anyways, thank you guys for watching this tutorial and uh, I guess I'll see you next time.